Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. I freaking love The Lord of the Rings. I used to watch the old Hobbit animated movie, the one from 1977, all the time growing up. The old Lord of the Rings ones too. God, what a trip those were. Those half animated, half real orcs freaked me out every time. Of course, then we got the Peter Jackson movies, which literally shaped my love for the genre, and then there were the video games. Ooh, baby, the video games. Tell me you haven't played the Return of the King game, and I'll tell you that you haven't lived. So, with all that said, I think it's time we do something with this love of mine. Welcome, everyone, to Shadow of Mordor, the Wraith Powers Only Run. If you haven't played it, this game has very quickly become one of my favorite Lord of the Ring titles. I don't think it's canon, since it takes a few liberties here and there, but it's close enough that you aren't taken out of the experience. For those of you familiar with only the movies, I'll keep it simple. The game takes place before the Lord of the Rings, but after The Hobbit. Sauron has only just returned to power, and the men of Gondor are asleep at their post, foolishly ignoring the growing dark at their doorstep. And so our story begins. <sighs> oh god, not the face! Oh, where, uh, where am I? The sword. It looks familiar. Maybe a flashback will jog my memory. Oh, it's my son's sword. Oh, okay, that makes sense. We should find him and ask him if he knows more about what's going on. I'll have you old guy. Ugh, that was weird. Oh, hey, that sounds nice. Time for the most wholesome button prompt in the history of gaming. God, what I would give to be the guy that came up with that one. Sniper monkey. Nah, just kidding. She's fine. We even got her flow. We must hide now. Are we about dead? Oh no. No, 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 no. This was supposed to be a fun playthrough. God. I remember now. Guess this won't be the happy fun playthrough I was hoping for after all. So, to reiterate, I'm dead, my family is dead, and my soul is currently intertwined with another ghost, Celebrimbor, the creator of the Rings of Power. No, not that one. Only Amazon can claim responsibility for trying to make an entire television series from a single book's footnotes. We are forever cursed to wander through Mordor, a shade of our past selves, unless we can find the one who did this to us, the Black Hand of Sauron. What happens after that is up in the air, but it's the only hope we've got. Time to get to work. I bang my ethereal hammer against my ethereal anvil, which acts as a map expansion, then do my best impression of Assassin's Creed. There's gonna be a lot of that going on. Uh, oops, uh, looks like I've got the wrong character skin on from the last time I played the game. Just, uh, just ignore that. So, it's at this point we can officially start the run, as we have now gotten our first Wraith ability, a bow. The bow starts as a pretty standard weapon. Using it slows down time until you run out of focus, after which point time runs normally. Shooting an enemy in the body will hurt them, but getting a headshot will usually result in an instant kill. And there we go. First combat of the game cleared. That wasn't bad at all. What the? Who's this bozo? My dude, this is the equivalent of a great jaggy attacking a hunter after it watched them just take down an elder dragon. Anyone who's played Monster Hunter 3 knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh hey, new wraith power. Behold, the power that is going to be our bread and butter for the entire run. Our wraith hand ability allows us to do several things. First, it lets us interrogate any orc who might have information we need, and later it'll give us even more options. But I'm feeling generous. We'll let Jaggy go for now. Tell the others. I'm coming for them. You know, this whole switching back and forth between Talion and this female skin is getting a little confusing. Please hold. Alright, that should fix it. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the female skin, but since the cutscenes don't switch to the skin as well, we'll just have to deal with Talion's ugly mug for now. So, let's talk about our wraith abilities. As of right now, we've got our bow and four arrows, which works well enough, but what's a guy to do when he runs out of arrows? Why, suck them out of the nearest orc, of course. Our wraith hand lets me force choke any orc within a few meters, which not only injures the orc in question, but also refills several arrows into my quiver. And yes, casting my force choke on an enemy multiple times will kill them. But as with all challenge runs, things could always be better. And this is where the skill tree comes in. Do enough things around the world, and we'll get experience. Get enough experience, and you can unlock new abilities and features. And who, baby, are we in for a good time here? Now it should be noted that we'll need two different types of experience. One we get from just exploring the world and killing orcs, but the other requires me to engage with the mini-bosses of the game. More on that later. For now, we've only got the first tier of abilities at our disposal, and most of them revolve around using our sword or other non-wraith attacks. However, there's this one here, Detonate. 
which lets me use my wraith bow to make campfires and explosive barrels, well, detonate. And it also makes me immune to the damage such explosions would cause. As if you had to ask. We can also hunt down collectibles while in wraith form, which will give us a currency that we can use to upgrade our weapons. Most of the upgrades aren't going to be all that useful, considering we can't use our sword or dagger, but the bow upgrades will be very helpful in the long run. I go around saving the prisoners of Mordor, collecting some experience, and just getting used to being a stealth archer in general. Let me just get some arrows here. There we are. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Don't you want to see my magic hand trick again? Alright, you're lost. Tell your friends. I gather a few more collectibles, forge a few plants to start working on some gathering challenges the game has, then test out our new detonate ability. Well, that's literally everything I ever wanted. You know what? My pockets are getting a bit heavy with all this cash I'm carrying around. Let's get an upgrade for our bow. We could get a health upgrade, but why do that when we can get more arrows in our quiver, or increase our time stop ability? Let's start with more arrows. They're our best method of attack at the moment. There we are, six arrows in the quiver. A fine start. And while we could just keep running around the map causing havoc, I think it's time we started doing some of the missions. Gotta unlock more abilities, after all. Alright, time for our first quest. Kill Gamoob the Slaver. Sounds easy enough. But, if we play our hand right, we can complete the bonus mission as well. Doing so will get us more experience. And trust me, we need all the experience we can get. We could also sneak up on an orc, throw him around a little bit, take him somewhere nice and quiet, and use our Wraith Hand ability to make him talk. And it's here that we find the mechanic that makes Shadow of War so unique. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Nemesis system. Basically, there are a series of orc captains, lieutenants, and generals, and all of them are constantly backstabbing one another to try to get to the top. The higher up the chain, the stronger they are. Thankfully, our current target is all the way at the bottom, so we should be okay. Thank you for the information, friend. Live your life as you see fit- God damn it, Talion! You were supposed to let him go. Ugh, well, duly noted. Interrogations are not going to be a thing in this run. At least, not yet. Well, we weren't too far into the run. Start over. And we're back. I finished the bonus objective with relative ease, which means it's time to fight the captain himself. He, uh, he's got a lot of health. So, good news, bad news. The bad news is that I can't counter his attacks, because a sword is not a wraith ability. And counters are kind of a huge part of this game's combat mechanics, so that'll be fun to work around. But good news, captains can indeed be drained. And it still does damage, which means a lot of possibilities just opened up. So here's the problem with our current playstyle. The wraith bow can kill six enemies very quickly. But Shadow of Mordor tends to throw more than six enemies at you at once, with more and more on the way. Ooh, geez, not the hair! Thankfully, Talion is the master of hardcore parkour. So with a little fancy footwork, we can create a little distance and try to drain an enemy for some more arrows. Ooh, or we can grab some ghost arrows on the wall and replenish our quiver that way. That works too. There goes one, and with a little bit of choking, Gamu the Slaver goes down. Don't, uh, don't take that out of context. And with the Orc Captain defeated, we get access to our first rune. Essentially, runes act as a passive bonus. There's several different types, and while not all of them are useful to our playstyle, some will be invaluable. The current one we collected regenerates our time slow ability to full, and gives us all of our health back every time we kill a mini boss. Decently useful, though I was hoping for something a little bit more aggressive. Guess we'll have to murder a few more captains. I free Gamoob's slaves, and bump into an old acquaintance. Judging by the context clues, my dude here was a ranger before he went AWOL. Allegedly, he knows where the Dark Hand of Sauron might be lurking, but won't tell us until we do more missions. Fair enough. What the? Is that? Huh, would you look who it is? You just couldn't resist showing your ugly mug, eh, Smeagol? After that abomination of a game you made earlier, you better hide. In any case, mission complete. A boatload of experience, and a little extra cash on the side as well. Moving right along. I free some more slaves, which unlocks side quests I can do later, but for now, I think it's best we keep pushing forward on the main storyline. I chase after Gollum, following his footprints, making sure to collect a little bit of extra experience as I go, and eventually track Gollum down to a nearby cave. Oh, look, a shiny. Well, can't just leave this lying around on the ground, can we? That's weird. It's vibrating. Almost like... Uh-oh. Bad, bad juju. Well, I guess that's why me and Celebrimbor are connected. We both lost our families to the Dark Lord. Not now, Gollum. I'm trying to piece together lore over here. Oh, good. And you brought a Karagor. Let me just take care of that real quick. There we are. Which means I can now give chase to Gollum. Or fight off an entire hunting party of orcs. That works too. Oh damn, look out boys. That Karagor over there has seen Tokyo Drift one too many times. Who man, I'd hate to be that guy. Anywho, where were we? Oh right, Gollum. Long story short, Gollum has been following us because he keeps having dreams of Celebrimbor. And can see him, apparently. Probably because he's been in possession of the ring for so long. 
But yeah, Gollum knows where more of Celebrimbor's trinkets are, and since holding these trinkets reveals some of his memories, Gollum gets to live so that we can unlock more of our past. For now. Until then though, let's get some more experience, shall we? Papa needs some new abilities. We're gonna have to kill a lot of orcs, so we won't be showing every single mini boss encounter. But here's a good example of how they usually go. First things first, I take care of all the minions. And then with that done, I can shoot the captain to de- Oh yeah, that's a thing in this game. Well, while I drain this captain to death, let's talk about that. Stronger orc mini bosses tend to have several weaknesses and strengths. Normally, we could interrogate orcs around the map to get a list of those weaknesses and then use it against them. But, you know, Talion tends to stab any interrogated orcs in the face afterward. So that's out. So, instead, we'll basically be going in blind for every fight. Praying to Eru that they aren't immune to both range damage and my Wraith Drain attack. But that's a bridge we'll cross when we come to it. For now, our current strategies are working just fine. Moving right along. I unlocked the ability to hold eight arrows at one time. Finally finished my first gathering quest, which gives me, whoo, damn, 100 money. Okay, I'll have to focus on that a bit more often. I stealth archer my way through more wild boss encounters and create the ultimate wombo combo. So long as there's no backup coming, you can just unload your quiver into an enemy, then drain them to refill it, then start the whole process over again. Stealth Archer is best archer, as per usual. Ooh, a bow rune. And would you look at that, five health regained for every headshot. Now that's what I'm talking about. You know what, let's upgrade our focus length as well. If we're gonna play as a stealth archer, we might as well lean into it full tilt. In fact, there's an entire retinue of side missions based entirely around the bow. There's also missions for the sword and dagger, but for obvious reasons, we won't be doing those. The missions tend to pay well, and if we do them all, our bow gets a new skin. Sounds like a fun side objective for the challenge run to me. These weapon-focused side missions tend to put you in scenarios where you need to prove your skill with the weapon. And considering we've been using nothing but, we've basically found an easy way to upgrade our character. There we are, 400 XP and 250 money for a thing we do on the regular anyway. Doesn't get any better than that. I get even more focus with our newfound cash, then do a little bit of exploring, unlocking more watchtowers and bits of the map. You'd think it would take a while, but thanks to another upgrade I recently purchased, I can now run at the speed of Ghost, decreasing our travel time significantly. Well, well, if it isn't the great Jaggy himself. Jaggy here claims he can get us closer to the Black Hand if we help him escape his current predicament. Personally, I don't really believe him, so let's double check his mind and make sure he's telling the truth. Hmm, guess he's not lying. You get to live. Again. Come along, little man. It's time to get to work. Oh, his name is Ratbag. And here I thought I was insulting him with the name I gave him. Huh, looks like Ratbag isn't exactly liked very much by anyone. Yay, escort mission! Thankfully, with all these new bow upgrades I've been getting, it takes little effort to clear the area of enemies. And even the Great Shield enemies go down in one hit, if you can manage to pull off a headshot. You'll love to see it. Hmm, running a little low on arrows. Ah, never mind. Found some. The mission requires stealth, so I quietly choke my way around the map, which is weirdly easier than it sounds. And after several discreet murders, I overhear that our target is currently at a nearby hunting camp. Time for a little more stealth. What? I'm being as quiet as I can over here, don't judge me. Well, it looks like our target is immune to my bow, so that sucks, but he does hate Karagors. Kinda weird for a Karagor tamer, but whatever. If we wanted to, we could actually shoot this cage open with our bow, releasing this here pup and watch as our boy gets torn to ribbons. But why do that when we can just insult the man to the nth degree by wraith draining him over and over again until he dies? God, this ability is broken. But with his death, we get to see the nemesis mechanic in action. With him dead, there's now a power vacuum for his position. A position that Ratbag eagerly fills. And with that done, we now have the ability to ride Karagors. Essentially just a way to get around faster if needed. Won't be using that too much if I'm being honest. I take out a few more orc captains for the XP, which means we now have access to a whole new tier of abilities. I've been saving up my points, so it's time to go shopping! First thing we'll get is Stealth Drain, which means we no longer have to drain enemies at a distance, and also Pin in Place, which lets me shoot the orcs in the legs to keep them from running away. I also found out that there is a way to get interrogation information about captains. Occasionally, the map spawns a dead body that just so happens to have the information on them. Less than ideal, but hey, if we ever need information for a mission, now we know how to get it. I make good use of the pin in place ability, which works just as well as you'd hope, then finally remember that I'm supposed to be doing missions and go back to progressing the storyline. I meet up with What's-His-Face, who wants some help getting his hands on some blasting powder and getting his wife back. Fair enough, I can get behind both of those goals. But first, my guy wants to teach me how to poison the orc's beer barrels. Cool trick and all, but I prefer a more aggressive kind of stealth. Besides, my idea of stealth is more fun. No boo, no fun allowed, I guess. Well, at least I got to try out my new stealth train ability. It's not exactly, you know, stealthy, but it gets the job done. And apparently counts as a stealth kill. So who am I to judge? Poison the beer, then sit back and let it do all the work. 
Not as fun, but you can't deny the effects. I help Hergon find his wife. At least someone gets a happy ending in this game. Do some more bow-related side missions, which, I must say, are always a chaotically good time. Then kill more orc captains for the experience and for some better runes. Ah, dang, right, story missions. Sorry, keep getting distracted. Oh look, Ratbag got into trouble again. Honestly, at this point, he's more trouble than he's worth. Hmm, looks like we've got another immune to ranged captain. Oh, and he's got a poison weapon. Great. Shame he isn't immune to being disrespected, though. Ah, shit, the game is forcing me to interrogate him. That doesn't bode well. I get the information out of him. Apparently he has a twin higher up the ranks that I'll need to kill. Not that it matters, though, when Talion inevitably fails the challenge run again. Oh! Talion, you glorious bastard. Looks like interrogations are back on the menu, boys. To be honest, I think we just got lucky with which animation the game chose to use. So in the fear of wasting time, I won't be doing interrogations if I can help it. But it's good to know that it's a possibility. Please get that ear out of my face. Pushing right along to the next story mission. Wow, you wasted zero time getting into trouble again, huh? Well, down you go. Looks like we've got a new enemy type, Berserkers. You're supposed to use a Wraith Punch to stun them, then go to town on them with your sword. But gravity seems to work just as well. I give Mog here the old choke and shoot combo, which means that Ratbag is, by default, the new war chief. Unfortunately, we now have to find and kill the other three. Otherwise, the likelihood of Ratbag getting in good with the Dark Hand is, well, I mean, you've seen him. I free a few more slaves to get more information about the remaining war chiefs, yet another way we can interrogate without accidentally failing the run, which, combined with finding a few dead bodies just lying around, is enough to reveal all the war chiefs on the map. I do some more bow side missions. Kill enemies at close range. Is that not how I'm supposed to be using the bow? Perfect the art of stealth? Yep, that's what stealth looks like. Then go after my first war chief. Ooh, boy, this is going to be a bit harder than I thought. By the looks of things, they have a boatload of minions surrounding them. And two captains as well. That could get ugly fast. But I've got an idea. After luring everyone close by, I do what comes naturally and blow up a barrel or two. And would you look at that. One of the war chief's captains has a fear of burning, which means he'll run away and refuse to come back to the fight. That's one down. As for the main target himself, he's actually scared of Karagors. So after we unleash this here beastie, he'll do anything he can to run away from the fight as well. Now granted, this does mean we'll have to chase him down and catch him before he escapes, but hey, at least he's running away from the rest of the rabble. So if we can catch him, it'll be much easier to fight. And would you look at that. Our boy ran himself right into a dead end. What a shame. One down, three more to go. Killing him also gave me enough power experience to unlock the next tier of skills. Let's see what we've got. I'll take some Wraith Finisher, which makes enemies' heads explode when I drain them, causing fear in all nearby enemies. Combat Drain, which lets me insta-drain an enemy if my combat multiplier is high enough, which also causes fear in nearby enemies. And another rune slot for my bow, so we can get a few more passive effects. Time for our next War Chief. Stakuga Life Drinker. That's a name. Looks like he brought an entourage as well, though that's not going to do much good for him with me on the higher ground. Oh, and the Karagor. Can't forget the Karagor. Oh, or the fire. Yeah, gotta remember the fire. God, I love this build. Right, who's next? Ukrom the Kinslayer, huh? Sounds like a good guy. Give me a sec, just need to clear the map a little bit. It's a little too busy for my liking. Let me just recharge my arrows, and we can get this fight underway. Uh-oh. Uh, panic? Time to panic? Well, shit, this just got complicated. Time to move to plan B. Let me just thread the needle here. There we are. Damage all around. Then, if we can get a little panic amongst the ranks as well, that should help out quite a bit. Ah, there we are. A nice clean shot. And a nice clean finish. And there you have it. Three down, one more to go. Last up, we've got Ugu the Cruel. More like Ugo, am I right? Guys, he's actually the first enemy I remember to use combat drain on after getting my combat multiplier high enough. Don't know why it took me so long to remember that ability, but it works great. And just like that, Ratbag is the last war chief standing. Looks like the Black Hand will have no one else to call on. Poor bastard. I kill a few more captains before pushing forward in the story. Partly for better runes and experience, mostly because I'm having a bit too much fun. Then I take on my next quest, helping Gollum find more of Celebrimbor's trinkets. And now I crave death. Ah, finally, here it is. Ooh, ow, my fingies! Hmm, looks like you were a big deal, eh, Kel? A big deal who was deceived by Sauron back before he was all dark and spooky. It's all coming together. Oop, no time for daydreaming, though. We've got ghouls. So, good news and bad news about the ghouls. The good news is they only take one shot to kill. You don't even need a headshot. The bad news is that they attack in swarms, which means arrows are in short supply. But good news again, you can actually wraith punch them to death, which not only thins their ranks, but also increases your combat multiplier. And with the new wraith ability I just unlocked, we can now drop ghouls by the tens with a single attack. Texas smash! Time to finish Gollum's questline. We hunt him down one last time, 
And wouldn't you know it, he leads us to another cave. Hmm, Karagors again. Oh, uh, that's uh, uh, a bit larger than I'm used to. I have a feeling we're going to need a bigger boat for that one. First things first, I shoot down some bait, which distracts our new friend long enough for me to enter the cave. And after a bit of a runaround from Gollum, I finally find the artifact I was looking for. What are these, dentist tools? Kel, were you an elven dentist in a past life? Ah, oh, okay, I'm sorry, it was a bad joke. Ah, okay, it's a forging tong. Kel used this when he forged the rings of power for Sauron. Guess that was kind of an oopsie, huh? No time to dwell on that now, though. Looks like the grog is done with his appetizer, and wants us as the main course. Fly, you fool. Hey, he said the thing. Okay, we're moving. Looks like we've got a new wraith ability, Shadow Strike. Basically, for the cost of two arrows, we can now zip across the map and wraith punch an enemy in the face. Not a bad deal. Not terribly useful as far as clearing enemies is concerned, but it should save some time navigating maps or helping me avoid detection. As far as the Grog is concerned, we let him defeat himself. One punch to the wall, followed by the age-old strategy of running away while screaming. And there you go. Grog down, and the last of Gollum's missions completed. And with that, we can now unlock a better version of the Shadow Strike. Rather than just wraith punching an enemy we warp to, we can now wraith execute them instead. Don't mind if I do. Wait a minute. The throwing daggers are wraith daggers? Why didn't you say so? There's even an upgrade so we can throw three in a row rapid fire. And any fleeing enemies that are hit with throwing daggers are insta-killed. Jeez, I've been sleeping on this ability. Good thing I'm awake now. Yep, that's a wraith dagger, all right. Oh lord, and it counts towards my combat multiplier? You know what this means, right? I can throw daggers until I get to the break point, combat drain an enemy to get some arrows, then use said arrows to do a shadow strike and insta-kill an enemy. What's more, I can even chain these together. It's not arrow efficient, but I'll be damned if it isn't fun. Speaking of fun, I keep getting distracted from the main quest. But seriously, look at these combinations. Drain a dude, do a little bit of punch out, finish strong with a headshot. Then, when their leader gets freaked out about how efficiently we're killing everyone, just zip in for a finishing shadow strike. No more chasing down baddies for us. God, it just feels so good! I maximize the runes on my bow, making room for as many passives as I can cram into it, which at this point consists of increased headshot damage, slower focus depletion, increased chance of causing enemies around a headshot to flee, a small chance to recover arrows every time I fire, and a guaranteed 5 health healed for every headshot kill. And once I unlock some of the next tier abilities, I've got a few runes that'll really complement those well. Get pumped. Unfortunately, we aren't invincible just yet. There are a few captains running around the map who are both immune to ranged attacks and my Wraith Drain abilities. This means I also can't attack them with my Shadow Strike abilities or daggers, so I have to kill them with environmental hazards instead. Unfortunately, the only way to throw an enemy off a cliff is if they're weakened enough. You can't just punch them off. So I'd need something like explosives or a Karagor to finish the job. At least for now. But there's better abilities on the horizon. I'm sure of it. So, naturally, I ignore the storyline, again, and unlock the next tier of abilities. Let's see what we've got. We've got fire arrows, which can be used once your combat multiplier is high enough and either set enemies on fire or cause even bigger explosions when used on campfires and explosive barrels. Yes, please. And Wraith Blast, which makes my wraith punches create a cone around each strike, hitting more enemies with each punch. Unfortunately, fire arrows do not cancel out ranged immunity, so we can't just set enemies on fire instantly. Bummer. But hey, at least Wraith Blast is working as intended. And when in doubt, there's always the tried and true method of punching your enemies in the direction of your choosing, then using a fire arrow to burn them to ash. All right, no more faffing about. It's time to push forward in the story. Hergon has finally gathered all the blasting powder he needs, so it's up to us to put them to good use. I clear out all of the guards, clear out all of the ghouls as well, then clear out a nearby camp. Doing a lot of clearing today, huh? Finally, after several minutes of defending Hergon, we arrive at our destination, a monument to Sauron. I think I know what's about to happen. Uh, yep, escorting the explosives. Go figure. And of course, there are archers with flaming arrows. I take care of them, then have to push the cart, myself, until we can get it to the base of the monument. Honestly, why are the rest of you even here? Do I have to do everything myself? Long story short, yes. Yes, I do. No, don't worry, it's fine. Everything's fine. I just came back from the dead to do the living's job, that's all. All right, monument destroyed. That ought to get the dark hand's attention. And sure enough, it does. Hey, I remember you. You're looking, um, pasty. Oh, hey, it's Ratbag. Man, this is just one big happy reunion, isn't it? I wonder how he likes my alterations to his artwork. I can't tell, does that mean he likes it or hates it? Well, guess it's time for our first proper boss fight, the hammer. First things first, we need to clear the dance floor. And now that there aren't so many orcs, I can hoo, okay, hello. Looks like he spawns in more minions whenever I kill the ones he already has. So that strategy is out and hitting him with throwing daggers just makes him angry and use explosive magic. So that's out as well. If I shoot him with an arrow, it does do damage, but he retaliates with an explosive magic attack. So that's no good either. 
And it looks like I can't use my Wraith Drain on him, since he can power through it and counter me mid-drain. I guess I can try to power my way through his attacks and just take the hits, then run away to heal up. But from the looks of the map, there's only one healing herb around, and going too far causes the battle to fail and reset. I don't know, this is looking pretty grit. Wait a minute, did you see that? If you shoot him, then immediately parkour off an orc. His attack misses you. Is that intentional? There's no way that's intentional. Well, intentional or not, it frickin' works. And just like that, the hammer is down for the count. You know what, Talion? Just this once, I'll allow it. Go ahead, kill him with your son's broken sword. You've earned it. The comment section will just have to deal with it. Do you speak with the living? Or only with the dead? Oh, hey, it's my previous avatar. Her name is Lothariel. Apparently, her mother is a sorceress of sorts and is asking for our help. Or rather, Celebrimbor's help. It's a whole thing. All you need to know is that we're about to go to an entirely different map. Hooray! First things first, I grab Critical Strike, which doubles my hit streak bonus so long as I don't just mash the attack buttons. And while this is meant for your sword, it also works on the daggers. Heru be praised. After that, I follow Lothariel home. Haven't seen the color green in a while. Can't say I'm upset about the change of location. Ugh, never mind. Is anyone else getting some Evil Dead vibes? Creepy Sorceress Lady says I need to go to Morgoth's Scar, steal some elven crafts from ghouls, find a dwarf, and the rest will reveal itself from there. Very cryptic. Definitely enough to go on. Right, let's do this. Into Morgoth's Scar, into the ghoul caves, and after a bit of stealthing around, we find the treasure room. And ooh la la, what have we here? That's the crystal hammer thing Sauron gave to Kel. Why do I feel like this one is going to hurt more than all the others? Man, I really need to stop screaming like that. Right then, time to go. Uh, hello there. You're a big one. Apparently they counter sword attacks. Shame that won't matter much for my build. Ooh, shit, poison spray. Okay, that was unexpected. The ghoul ambush party, however. That I saw coming. Let me just clear a little space. And there we go. Ghoul flambe. I'm not eating that. I explode my way out of the cave, quite literally, and find myself face to face with a dwarf. Looks like this prophecy nonsense is a little easier than I thought. And after a quick talk with Mama Marwyn, she tells me I need to kill the Black Hand. Duh. And summon an army to take Mordor. That last part might be a little tricky, considering I'm, you know, cursed to remain in Mordor. But Marwyn says I don't need men. Just unwilling participants. Interesting. And just like that, we've got a new ability. Now, when we drain enemies, rather than just getting some arrows, we also convert them to our cause. Exhibit A. This archer is now a Firebomb Academy Scholar, and will help me if I call them to action. And once I've got a respectable number of new allies, it's time to activate them. Alright, let's see how this works. Well, it's definitely causing panic and disarray. Oops. And some might say it's a little too effective. My new minions tend to kill anyone I try to convert before I can finish the job. But hey, I guess that's a good problem to have. I saved some men who have another bauble for me. Yee! Which shows me that Kel was a goddamn badass. Look at him go! Shame he decided to go up against Sauron. That was probably a bad play. I guess Kel got taken to Mordor as an unwilling participant after that. I'm sure that went well for him. In other news, Lady Marwyn reveals that if I can convert an orc leader, all of his followers will be converted as well. I mean, that's certainly faster than converting each individual orc in Mordor. I'll take it. I find an orc leader, convert his troop against him, then begin the fight with him directly. Oh, of course you're immune to ranged attacks. But tell me, are you immune to spears? Oh, fuck. Um, that was a little more effective than I was expecting. Alright, let's try this again. How about only one spearman this time? Uh, you know what, the last time they insta-killed him. Zero Spearman it is. Besides, he could be drained, so there's no real threat here. And once he's weakened enough, we can now command him, rather than just stab him in the face. Alright you, go on now. Go find me another captain to convert. My new captain and I roam the countryside, killing and converting any orcs we find, and eventually I make my way to an orc stronghold. Plenty of strong bodies in there. Let me just convert the high ground to my side real quick, and would you look at that. Right on schedule. We only have one captain of the two, but that's okay. A few Karagors ought to make up the difference. Combine that with an explosion, and there we go. Mission failed. Wait. Okay, restart. Apparently friendly fire is discouraged. Yeah, okay game. This time, I just jump straight into the fray. Convert some enemies, pick off any stragglers that refuse to join the cause, and eventually, without my help, my captain kills the target. Which means we are now in possession of our very own warchief. Well, how about that? Time to tell Mama Marwin the good news. Woo! Yep, could have told you that doesn't work. Cut down the old woman, it's the only way. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I said. Cut down the old woman's staff. Why, what did you hear? Turns out, Marwin was getting the Saruman treatment. Saruman wanted an army of his own to fight against Sauron. 
Same trick, different angle, I suppose. But despite the ill intentions, this whole converting Mordor thing might just work in our favor anyway. It's gonna take more than one Warchief, though. Five, in fact. Here we go again. I've got a loose ability point rolling around in my pocket, so I buy Blade Master, which reduces the combat multiplier threshold from eight to five. I'm sure that'll be helpful. I then realize that I've been sleeping on my dagger and sword runes, and equip a few that can help out my build. Like this dagger rune that gives me four extra arrows every time I use combat brand. After that, I may have gotten distracted again and did a bunch of side missions, getting really good at manipulating my combo streaks in the process. But eventually, I remembered that quests exist, and go to help Marwyn recover her medicine so they can escape Mordor. A stealth mission? Ugh. Remember kids, it still counts as stealth if no one is alive to talk about it at the end. Psst, can I tell you a secret? I haven't washed this hand in weeks. All right, medicine acquired. And maybe a little flirting? These are not your people, Talion. Remember your wife and son. And the moment's gone. Right, back to business. I'm gonna stick an arrow so far down your throat, it'll come out your backside. And maybe a little flirting? <laughs> Oop, hold on. Lothario's in trouble. Don't worry, citizen. I'm here to assist you. A short escort quest later, where I basically just converted everything I came across, and a little more unsuccessful flirting later, and Lothario's questline is complete. Goodbye, nice lady. Maybe in the next game. Then, after clearing what was essentially the entire map, I unlocked the final tier of abilities and went on an upgrading spree. First, I unlocked Quick Draw, which makes it much easier to knock and loose an arrow, got Wraith Burn, which lets me absorb any stunned or knocked down orcs with a single button press, Dispatch, which lets me use Power Word Kill on all the orcs that are currently branded and following me around, Critical Strike 2, which triples my combat multiplier, and Shadow Strike Chain, which lets me jump from target to target with my Shadow Strike attack, rather than having to aim my bow in between each target. If I'm being honest, I don't think I can get any stronger than I currently am. We're out of new skills to learn, and I've bought most, if not all, of the bow upgrades, which means we have maximum focus and quiver size. I guess I could find the rest of the collectibles and upgrade my health. <laughs> yeah, you thought. No, I think it's time. Our bow even has a rune that boosts our fire arrow so that causes many explosions. I don't think we can do any better than this. Time to brand all the war chiefs. Let's finish this. That makes three, and four, and last but not least, number five. And just like that, we have all five war chiefs in our command. That was surprisingly easier than I thought it would be. I even went out of my way to upgrade my bow to maximum, legend runes and all. See how she shimmers, see how she shines. But now, it's finally time. Time to wage war on the Black Gate. Drown the air with Uruk cries and the earth with Uruk blood! You heard the man. With fire and flame, let us bring forth the new age. Fuel for the charcoal throne. <laughs> they never stood a chance. This is it. Time for the Black Hand. I wasn't expecting you. Dad? I hope my soldiers gave you welcome. Tony, was that you? All right, where the hell is this guy? Bow to me. And I will deliver you to the Dark Lord. Unspoiled. We bow. We bow to. No Dang it, Kelly, you stole my line. Well, yet another moment we can never get back. But in any case, it's time for the second to last boss. The tower. The start of the fight is all about stealth draining him. Just sneak up behind him and give him the old drain and pain. Simple enough, really. Uh-oh. The man's playing mind tricks. Joke's on you. I am and have always been a sniper monkey. Die, illusory strumpet! You will never see your family again. I shall I shall I shall I shall We bow to no one! Place to stay. Nailed it. Time to wrap up the loose ends. It's been revealed to us that Celebrimbor has been using us. I am in fact cursed to remain in Mordor, but he's been using me as a vessel. And with a little help from Gollum, we see that Celebrimbor forged the One Ring for Sauron as well, though not without putting up a fight, and stealing it for himself. With that now known to us, there's nothing else for it. Let's bring the hurt to the Black Hand himself. The Goddess sends her regards. I destroy all five Talons of the Hand, each one going down without mercy at either my own hand or that of my followers. And within seconds, we arrive at the final encounter. Hello there. I have a gift for you. Calibrimor. I bow to no one. Oh, my face! 
Alright, so, as anyone who's played this game knows, the ending is, how do you say, the most underwhelming piece of garbage I've played in recent memory. Because rather than fighting a final boss, the game gives you quick time events. But don't worry, I think I know how to fix this. When in doubt, add Doom music. Is... is it done? Did we fix it? Well, I guess that's up for the comment section to decide. In any case, that's it. Shadow of Mordor beaten with just Wraith attacks. But I've got one more trick up my sleeve. There is a better ending to the game, and it's hidden in the Bright Lord DLC. The entire DLC is based around playing as Celebrimbor after he stole the ring, which means you can use the one ring to do crazy nonsense like, oh, I don't know, removing a mini-boss's immunities. And wouldn't you know it, Cal also has some new abilities, like using Shadow Strike to brand enemies not just kill them. So I did what any sane person would do. I cleared the entire DLC with the same rule set as before. And as much fun as it would be to show the entire DLC, there's really not much to show. You basically just convert entire armies and rebuild the watchtowers while branding the war chiefs. So, you know, the same thing we already did. So while I'm sure there will be a few of you who are upset that we don't go step by step through the DLC, just know that you've essentially already seen it. And besides, this video is long enough as it is. So without further ado, we'll just skip right to the end the true ending of the game, facing off against Sauron himself. Come die, thief. Thief? No, that title doesn't apply to me. I come from under the hill, and under the hills and over the hills my paths led, and through the air I am he that walks unseen. I am the clue finder, the web cutter, the stinging fly. I was chosen for the lucky number. I am he that buries his friends alive and drowns them and draws them alive again from the water. I came from the end of a bag, but no bag went over me. I am the friend of bears and guest of eagles. I am ring winner and luck wearer, and I am the backlogs. Okay, so, a uh, slight problem. Sauron refuses to die. He's got that magic pixel of health left, but apparently I can't drain him to death. But I've got one last trick up my sleeve, because if there's one thing we've learned here on the channel, is that when in doubt, use fire. We bow to no one! Oh crap! Arrogant fool. Do you really think you can defeat me so easily? What's yours has always been mine! Oh crap. Well, the good news is that I was very busy collecting everything before this fight, so I have lots and lots of followers to summon in. And the minions I've been collecting are very strong, so they can do most of the work for me. There's just one teeny tiny problem. Sauron can, um, you know, raise the dead. And against the Lord of Darkness himself, my minions are nothing more than a stepping stone. Aw oh, man, my boys! Worked hard for those. Well, I guess there's only one thing for it. Time to do it all over again. I use the One Ring to remove Sauron's immunities, drain him every chance I get, run away and drain enemies to recharge the ring when I run out of juice, then reactivate the ring and start the process all over again when I'm refilled. You have to punch Sauron before doing the drain attack, because otherwise he just dodges your attacks, but otherwise there's no real issues. And after three rounds of this, it's finally over. The ring, and all of its power, is finally mine. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, bind them. <laughs>